First Kings, chapter 1, verse 28. Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. So she steps out, lets the men speak. That used to be a custom. When men would speak, the women would stake, would, would stake out. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. That's her husband. But as far as Israel goes, this is a national matter. This is not a matter between a husband and a wife. And the king swore and said, As the Lord liveth, that's an oath, that's the highest oath you can make, that has redeemed my soul out of distress. So there's only one God that's redeemed David. There is no other God. There's been no other God that helps David. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this. Now what David has done, he's confirmed what he's told Bathsheba. He has confirmed what he's told Nathan and everybody else. 2 Samuel 7, 12, I believe that is. Page got wrinkled, so hopefully that's it. 2 Samuel 7. Verse 12. Let's see, hopefully that's it. Yes. This is the seventh covenant, or the Davonic covenant, where God says, listen, David... Because your love for me, because your heart is pure for me, you want me. I'm going to make your house, I'm going to make your throne forever. And he says in verse 12, And when the, thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. We're coming up to that. But before he dies, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. This is after David's death. He shall build a house for my name. Well, there's only one person in the Bible has done that. And I will, establish, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he, okay, and we know he commits it. So there is a son promised to David that is going to reign after you. Now he's not so named. But let's go to chapter 12, verse 24. Chapter 12, verse 24. And there is no other said about any of David's sons but this in 2 Samuel 12, 24. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and laid with her. And she bare a son and called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan, the prophet, there's Nathan, and he called his name Jedediah. <coughs> Excuse me, but of the Lord. Jedediah means beloved of the Lord. None of David's sons are said that. But Solomon. Now, one of the things you get with David in his lifetime was he had a great love for Absalom. And God removed Absalom. Absalom was used in the overthrow of the government. So with those implications of those two verses, we can see that Solomon, no other, is the one that David said, hey, that's going to be my throne. That's the one that God's going to establish. In verse 31 of 1 Kings 1, Then Bathsheba bowed her face to the earth and did reverence. Oh, let's go back to verse 1-4 in 1 Kings. Let's look at these two titles given to men. Chapter 1, verse 4. And the dancer was very fair, and cherished the king, and ministered to him. Now, we already said that there are men out there called ministers. Yeah, I said people minister to the minister more than a minister ministers to the people. That's taking care of, that's helping, that's being an aid. That's what this woman's job was. Her job was to give David heat. That's how she ministered. She done what her functions were to be. Now we got Bathsheba, verse 31. She reverenced the king. 
And there are people out there called reverend. And you know why they're called reverend? Because they want people to bow down before them. They're almighty reverend, almighty. That's what reverend means. It means you give honor. And when somebody has that title reverend, man, you, you, you are stuck on pride. Because the word reverend comes from reverence, and it means to love, adore, and look who I am. And the minister, minister such and such, that's to provide aid and help. Two titles in the churches today. And yet the man that ha or woman that has that title shouldn't be a woman. And what you're telling the congregation, serve me and reverence me. It's wrong. The reverend such and such. I ain't worshiping you. Bathsheba gives you the definition of reverence. She fell down to the earth and bowed. <laughs> That's what men want. That's a title. And said, let my Lord King David live forever. That's, That's words you say to a king, but it's not going to happen. Well, for David it does. Yeah, it's, you know, how you, if you hate the president, how you doing, Mr. Mr. Trump? I, I hope you have a long and prosper life. You don't really, me, I mean, she, me, I'm just saying, it's just words you say. It's like people say, well, how do you do? And then you tell them and they didn't want to know. Yeah, and she knows he's suffering in bed and act or shy or whatever. It's through there. They're helping him. I, I always picture that, you know, Bathsheba, I mean, this is my husband. Shouldn't I be there? And he's got how many other it's wives? It's kind of like a nursing home and, you know, the nurse is helping. Yeah, well, the nurse well, is helping. Well, She's well, in the bed. Well, yeah, but they didn't have things to <laughs> And King David said, call me Zadok the priest. Oh, oh that's the high priest. That's the priest that's, that's the over the priest that went with, yeah. with Abijah. Zadok, because he did not rebel against David and was faithful to David, God will establish that seed of Zadok. And we'll see that later as we get into the scripture. Yeah, but he did. He went off with the other guy instead of staying with David and God. He kind of betrayed him. Like, no, he's still there. And David calls him, and Nathan the prophet. Now these are people that Nathan, that, Nathan, that David's son didn't call because they knew. Uh, what are you doing, Adam John? I'll make myself king. No. Oh, yeah. He's Solomon. Solomon. Uh, Abiathar. Oh, that went. I got mixed up. He's in verse 7. And it says. I thought he was the one that went with. And I conferred with Joab, the son of Zariah, and Abiathar, the priest. Okay. He's under uh, yeah. Zadok. Right. So here's Zadok. Here's Nathan, two men that would take an Abijah and say, you're wrong. This would be like the like Gad walking up to David. Hey, how you doing? There was this story. Here's these two people. Thou art the man. These two would have told Abijah, no. And of course, he didn't want to hear no. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, Jeho he's the kind of guy, he's the enforcer. <laughs> he's the bodyguard. He's the, you know, don't mess with him. And they came before the king. And the king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and cause Solomon my son to ride upon a upon my own mule. Now that would be the luxury limousine of the king back then. This is the Cadillac of king. The best one. The best I, I don't know why it's not a horse, but a mule. And bring him down to Gihon. David hopped all the horses. <laughs> and let Zadok the priest, the high priest, and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel. And blow ye the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. So when the English in England say, God save the queen, God save the king. There hasn't been a king in many years. But they used to say, God save the king when there was a king. It came out of the King James Bible. I bet you they don't even realize that. I wonder what they say today. I don't know if it's, if it's still said or not. But if you do say God saved the queen when 
when the queen approaches, that's the Bible. Now, what David's doing here is, I relinquish by God all my power, all my realm, all my kingdom to Solomon in the name and oath of God. I would think that's secure. Then ye shall come up after him, that ye may come and sit upon my throne. And he shall be king in my stead. And I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. Look, they're already still split. That split did not happen with Rehoboam and Jeroboam. It happened. Physically. Physically, it happened. But when David came back and they had that argument, who belonged to David, that's when it started. And it's been a long feud. And I guarantee Solomon would do things that would anger Israel. But there's always been that division, north and south. Like I would believe in America. I believe there was probably always that division. There still is. When I lived in New England, there was a division between North and South. You either liked the Boston Red Sox or you liked the New York Yankees. There was always that division. It's been there. People will find something to draw a line in the sand to say, you can't step over that line. Or you're my enemy. So you see, it's still there. Israel and over Judah and even David acknowledges. Hey, you know what? We're not together. We're not unity. When David ready to die. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. What did David preach? <laughs> he didn't preach nothing. He said, I'm going to establish a kingdom. And he said, Amen. And you walk in some churches, you can't say amen. No, oh, everybody looks at you. You're an oddball. We weren't in church like that. It's in the Bible. And amen means so be it. So Benaiah says, King, I acknowledge what you said. All right. The Lord God of my Lord, the king, say so too. As the Lord has been with my Lord, the king, even so be he with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. So Benaiah is throwing a blessing in there for Solomon. Make it even better. Now, look at all the trouble David's had since he's had that throne. He's been battle after battle after battle after battle. And yet Solomon is going to reign in complete peace. Especially during the time that temple is being built. So Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites and the Perethites went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule and brought him to Gehar. Do you see Jesus Christ coming to the triumphant entry? Do you see him coming to the city? If you don't, let's read on. And Zadok the priest took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle. So he goes inside the holy place and gets the oil. The oil, olive oil, it's used for the lamps, for light. He brings a vial of olive oil out and anointed Solomon there. Stop his head and just let it flow down. That's an anointing. And they blew the trumpet. And the trumpet is just, uh, in the book of Leviticus. There were trumpets made, silver tr trumpets, and they were to be called for certain assemblies. This call would be, there's a new king. And all the people said, God save King Solomon. Let's look at verse 25. And we've gone down that this day and has slain oxen, fat cattle, and sheep in abundance. And I called all the king's sons. No, he didn't. And the captain of the host and the Biophar the priest. There's a Biophar. And behold, they eat and drink before him and say, God save King Adonijah. Well, God can't do nothing if that's not the one that God, God did not want. All the people, all the people under the authority of Zadok the priest, the one that is under God for the nation. The one that's under the authority of David, the king of the nation. The church and state together has announced by God that Solomon, no one else. And all the people came up after him. The people pipe. That's the first time that word shows up. Pipe. With pipes. That's the first time that word shows up. 
And that's not plumbing, that's musical flute, uh, a recorder, and those kind of instruments. And rejoice with great joy. Now, where do you get that one at? That's when Jesus is coming on the on the mule, the coat of a mule. He's coming to the city. Hosanna! Jesus is coming to destroy Rome. We're going to get our land. No, not yet. He's got to suffer. So Solomon becomes a type of Jesus Christ. David comes a type of God. God says, listen, son, you go into that city and you go to the cross. You get a throne. What's that throne? He told Mary. Gabriel said, the throne of David. Now, you're going to die at 33 and a half years old, thereabout. You're going to suffer and die. They're going to get, they're going to put you in that grave. You're coming out of that grave three days and three nights. And for over 2,000 years, you're going to have to wait. And we're going to have Jacob's trouble, seven years. But at the end of that seven years, son, you're going back. You're going to wipe out those that hated the Jews. You're going to wipe out those that hate you. And then you're going to take that seat. And we read in our reading the other day, he said he's going to build that tabernacle. He's going to build that temple. And that's where he's going to sit, the throne of David. What else do you have that Jesus Christ here with Solomon? Is there an established building as a temple as of yet? No. There is no temple right now. Who builds that temple according to scriptures? Jesus. Who's going to build the temple coming up? Solomon, a type of Jesus Christ. Solomon means peace. He's going to have peace when he builds that temple. Christ will have a thousand years of peace. Solomon sins, though Jesus Christ will never sin. And yet there are still sinners. There are still people. There is a lake in the millennium that God will say, go jump in that lake if you've been found charged guilty. There will be an army gathered after the millennium by Satan to overthrow God, which won't happen. So, now watch this. And the people came up after him and and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy. That's what, when Jesus came, waiting when Jesus Christ comes back again. When they've been tormented by the Antichrist and they see that temple. It was recorded in Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah. The Bible said, you know, who here remembers the first temple? And it says that there were people crying and there were people rejoicing. They're rejoicing. Here's the temple. It's here. Well, why are you crying? I remember Solomon's temple. I remember the beauty of Solomon's. This is not like it, but it's, yeah, it's, but I remember what Solomon's temple. And there'll be Jews like that when Jesus comes back. Rejoice with great joy that the earth rent. Now, that's excitement. When you got people gathered together and they are so cheerful, you can't get this happen at a, at a football stadium. And they cheer. There's a stadium, I forget which one it is, and it's so built that the opposing team, they get everybody to cheer, they get everybody to scream, they get everybody to holler because the other team can't hear, can't talk, can't make the plays on the field because the, the opposing fans are just cheering so loud. I forget which stadium that is football, I believe. But the earth don't rent. You get a bunch of idiots cheering over here, a bunch of guys making left-hand turns, we can't hear them. We can hear the loudspeaker. The earth doesn't rent, even with the cars going round and round and round. But when you get the people here, I mean... There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of shouting. There's a lot of pipes going. There's a lot of flute. There's a lot of joy. Here is Solomon. He's the king. Glory to God. No president of the United States ever had that. No monarch in England has ever had such. And we come back. If this is a type of Jesus Christ coming back with the Jews. Can you imagine that excitement we're going to see when we pick up those Jews? When they finally realize that is the Messiah. And they see the holes in his hands. They say, what are those holes in his hands? I'm the proof. I'm the one. Man, 
this is going to break out in joyfulness. With the sound of them. All right, let's put a clash on the meeting. And Adonijah and all his guests, that's the first time that word shows up. Now this would picture the Pharisee, what we're going to read now. Stretch forth thy hand. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I have never, ever used my hand. On the Sabbath day. Oh, my back. Oh, man, my back. Oh, woman, 12 years, you've had that problem being bowed over. Be healed. He did it on the Sabbath day. Blah, 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 blah. Everyone realize every time everyone rejoiced at what Jesus did, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were just grumpy pussies. They never got a joy out of Jesus. Their congregation was relieved of their pains, blindness, uh, devils, and, and, uh, deafness and all that, and they never rejoice. There's a guy in the congregation one day, and they're looking at Jesus to see if they would heal him. Really? Really? So Adonijah and all his guests that were with him heard it as they had made an end of the eating. They're almost getting done with mealtime. They're finishing up on the dessert. Someone's picking up the plate. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, I can always picture Joab. He's leaning back on some chair. He's got a glass of wine. Oh, man, I am burnt. He's at, he, he's at a Chinese buffet. I'm just picturing this. He, he's sitting there. He's drinking it. What was that I heard? What was that? The military leader who David had fired. <laughs> Here he is. He's on the wrong side. He said, wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar? That's the first time that word shows up. Uh, Joab, it's your job to know what's going on. You're the leader. And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Biathar, the priest. Biathar is there. Here comes his son. And Biathar, the priest, came. And Adonijah said unto him, come in. For thou art a valiant man, and bringeth good tidings. Now, 2 Samuel 18, 2 Samuel 18, 19, what this would back up that they didn't have walkie-talkies or cell phones back then. Oh. And what they would do is they would send men off the front to the king or to the military leaders, or the military leaders, like Uriah, would send orders back. And with this verse in 2 Samuel 18, 19, and said to Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, let me now run and bear the king tidings. It looks like the priests were the runners. Let me now run and bear the king tidings, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemy. And Joab said, thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day, Thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to Cushai, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. Cushai bowed his head and ran. And down verse 28, same chapter, 18, 28. And Ahimaaz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth, and he fell down to earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord God which has delivered up the men and lifted up their hand against the Lord the King. Oh, wait a minute. Verse 27, excuse me. Verse 27. And the watchman said, Me think is the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and cometh with good tidings. So when we come back to 1 Kings 1, here's a valiant man, Jonathan. He bringeth good... So it looks like you didn't play the game. You didn't run up to the king and say, King, I got good news, I got bad news. Which one do you want? When God, when the king would see, let's say Ben. That's a Jewish name. Ben was a bearer of bad news. Oh, here comes Ben. Oh, man. And say Adam. That's another good Bible name. And here comes Adam. Oh, he's got good news. So the person that would come to you would be already. It's good or bad news by the person. So that's kind of interesting that the king would get, okay, 
This is the news I'm getting because that guy's come. And when we got that other man, Ahimaaz, he wants to run. Joab's like, no, don't run. Because you don't have the news the king needs. It's not good news. So 1 Kings 143. So it looks like the bearer of the news, that person was either he was good or bad news. And Jonathan answered and said to Anijah, Verily our Lord King David has made Solomon king. Now everybody's now choked up. Everybody's eyeballs are now bigger than the saucers. Everybody's probably up in their chairs. They're probably, you know, stuffed and, and burping, Ch choking. choking and spitting the milk out and the wine's all over the table now. That's not the news they want to hear. Now what would they hear? Adonijah. I have rebelled against the government. And we'll see that at the end of this chapter. Joab, I'm in big trouble. I've been in big trouble. I have made the trouble even worse. We'll see that later on. Everybody at that spread. Abiathar, the priest. Ooh, Zadok's going to kick my butt. Because I don't belong here. And Solomon will deal with him. So this is news they don't want. I could just imagine the, the reaction. And the king, and it's funny because he had bad news. <laughs> but he wasn't sent by nobody. He found out what's going on. And the first thing he thought, I better go run to these people and tell them. And the king had sent with him Zadok the priest. And Nathan the prophet. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And the Kerizites and the Pelizites. He got more than two witnesses. More than three witnesses. And they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule. Now, can you imagine the news when the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes heard that Jesus is coming into the city? And they're riding upon the, the mule. They're casting their clothes before him. They're casting uh, the palm branches before him. They are exalting him. They are shouting. Can you imagine how well they took it. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king in Gion. You had priests over here. But they're not the ones. And they are come from thence rejoicing so that the city rang again. This is the noise that you had heard. It was so loud they could hear it. The grounds rang. And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the king. There he is now. So what you have now is you have two kings reigning. David's still alive. Though he's passed it on to Solomon, in all aspects, that royalty doesn't go until David dies. You got joint rulership, joint kingdom. But Solomon now, hey guys, guess who's sitting on, on King David's throne right now? Solomon. Adonijah is like, uh, that's where I'm supposed to be. Now he's rebelling again. Now Bathsheba's been spared. Solomon now has been spared. By David and by Zadok. And by God. Moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord King David, saying, God, make the name of Solomon better than thy name, and make his throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. Now, evidently, the guy that Jonathan that came, verse 36, he is there with the king in the king's room. Because that what was just said was Benaiah. And David is in his room. He's called Bathsheba. He's called Zadok. He's called Nathan. He's called Benaiah. He's in his room. And this gentleman, uh, Jonathan, was also there. And he's able to report, this is what I saw. And also thus saith the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which has given one to sit on my throne this day, my eyes even seeing it. That's what Jacob said about Joseph. My eyes are following. I thought I'd never see you, son. But not only, not only did I get to hear you're alive, but I got to put my eyes on your eyes and my eyes upon your two sons. Something about Jacob. Getting back with Joseph, 
is a type of Jesus Christ coming back. Because this is, this is the almost exact thing what Solomon said, what Jacob said. Joseph's been away for a long time. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid. <laughs> And rose up and went every man his way. You know, it's just like the table is just all messed up and, you know, spitting out whatever was in your mouth. And we're out of here. Out of here Cheers are knocked see. over. And Adam and I is just standing there like, oh, thank you very much, people. Like all the accomplices running in every direction. Yeah. And he's standing there all by himself. So if Solomon would have come. And I just stand there alone with Jonathan there. And Jonathan, he's just giving the news. He wouldn't stand up for Adonijah. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon. I would too. And arose. So he was still sitting down. Everybody's gone. He hadn't had time to get up. They're gone. And went, and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. Now let's look at Exodus 29 and see what he does. He goes into the courtyard. Exodus 29, 37. And he walks up to the brazen altar and he grabs those horns where he tied the animal to. Exodus 29, 27. And thou shalt sanctify, set apart. Am I 29? 2937. Okay, yeah. 2937. I don't want to say. That sound right. 37. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify, set apart. It shall be an altar most holy. Whosoever touches the altar shall be holy. Now, one more place in Exodus 3028. 3028. In 3028, the altar of burnt offerings with all his vessels, that would be the horn, and the labor in his foot. Now, what God says, anybody that touches that altar, you're holy. So Adonijah walks up to that altar, and the only charge really he's got right now is rebellion. He is the next son in line to be that throne. Now, whether he knows what everybody else seems to know, that it's Solomon. Okay? So what he's playing is, you know what? I'm going to that altar. I'm going to declare my holiness by this altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah feareth, that's the first time that word shows up, King Solomon. <laughs> King Solomon. 30.29. Let's go back to Exodus 30.29. Thirty twenty nine, and thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy whatsoever touches them shall be holy so that night is like okay you should try and you see this today in South America you see this in Roman Catholic churches there's a guy who has a plot against the government or has murdered somebody or done any vicious crime. And they run to the church. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. And you see this in a lot of television programs. And the church will, will sanctify this person. Hide them. Hide them. It's in the Bible. And yet they're guilty. Adonijah is not guilty. Now we're going to see Joab do this. Joab's not going to get away with it. Because Joab, when we come to it, is guilty. Now, there's a possibility what Solomon does is Adonijah, maybe he didn't know I was the king. Maybe because he was the first in line, he, he jumped the gun. But as far as proof, it's not there. And so told Solomon to say, Behold, Adonijah, the king, feareth the king, 
For lo, he has caught hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me today that he will not slay his servant with the sword. I don't want to die. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not a hair of his head, hair of him, fall to the ground, fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, and it will later, he will really he's guilty, but not now. But he's guilty. He shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar, down from the altar. That altar's up on stairs. It's high. And he came and bowed himself to King Solomon. And Solomon said unto him, Go to thy house. So there we go. Solomon is now on the throne. He's already had, his father has an absurd authority. There's a coup. It can't be really proved what the intentions were. Solomon's like, all right, go. On. But, but. You are on notice. And he'll blow it later. 